there, everybody. This is Birch. I did a video a couple days ago about uh, Riri Williams and the fact that the character actually was less of the problem than the writer. And I was trying to make a point. I don't know that I made the point terribly well, but, you know, such is how it is. Um, and it, the point I was trying to make is that the whole Riri Williams dialogue got really, really uh, tied into racism. If you didn't like the character, you were racist. And on the eve of Black Panther and Riri Williams, you know, showing up again and, you know, it's a movie. It's a two-hour movie, so I can pretty much predict that the speed at which Riri goes from, like, girl wandering around who's, you know, kind of tech-savvy, I don't know, is she working in, uh, where, where is, she, is Shuri's lab? Like, what, what, is, what is the story behind her? You know, who knows? Um, but I'm pretty confident that, you know, she's going to go from, like, random background character in a lab to suddenly with a superpower Iron Man suit and flying around in a really short amount of time. She's going to get maybe 12 minutes of screen time total in that movie, if, if that. And um, and it's going to feel very fast. So the arguments are all going to come up again, and the arguments are going to come right back up again of, you're racist. If you don't like this character, you are racist. Why can't a young girl with no skills and experience be Iron Man? Shouldn't, shouldn't that be true? You're going to get a lot of that. Uh, so the point I was trying to make in the in the video was simply that it's not the character. It's not Riri. It's, you know, it, in many cases with this, uh, with the whole argument of racism, keep in mind the person who was putting the words in Riri's mouth, making her do what she did, was a kind of older white guy. That That's who was doing it. So if we want to say, you know, you not liking Riri is racist, then I guess you're racist against white people. I, under, I, I mean, I understand uh, we're being a little funny with, uh, with how we describe this, but, but, you know, if the writer is the cipher behind the character, then you're not, you know, you're, you, the character, Riri Williams is not black. She's a fictional character. She's colored, you know, in Photoshop. The person who is the, the driving force behind that character is white. So the racist argument, I mean, you know, it may not wash as much as people think it does. Kind of my point. Anyway, that was kind of my point. And the other argument I made was, you know, you change that character around, put a different writer on, on her, and suddenly, you know, it's it's pretty good. You know, go figure. So this, this writer uh, is going to talk about some of the same things. says, hey, Perch, hope things are going well. In a recent video, you talked about how Bendis was the bigger problem with Ironheart rather than Riri herself. You then pointed to Eve Ewing's run on that did the concept more uh, competently as evidence. Uh, Zub also did did um, Riri uh, much better in in his run. Uh, I don't really want to hash out that old online battle about Riri, but it did make me wonder something. Are these comics you've read where the character is? Are there comics you've read that the character is so bare, so ill conceived, just plain so bad that the character is a bigger issue than the writer themselves? where you could put an Alan Moore or another luminary on it and not get noticeably better. Uh, thanks for your time. So, yes, I think it's possible. It's, it's not that any character can be good if you just had a good writer. Uh, because some characters, if they're so derivative, if, they're so, uh, if, if there's just nothing unique about them, if they're clearly just a cash grab to, you know, to, to kind of... And, and in the 90s, you had some of these characters that were like clearly just a, you know, very, very shallow Wolverine clone because people are like, well, people like extreme characters. So this character is going to have spikes and a sword. They're going to talk gruff and, and be be cool and extreme. They're going to have a skateboard. I'm not talking about Night Thrasher, but but I mean, characters that, that they're they're so there's just there's nothing to them at all. They're completely devoid of any actual, you know, personality or, you know, any, any defining traits whatsoever. There's definitely that factor in, in comics. And there are some of those characters that exist. Uh, in that world, the writer has nothing to go with because the character themselves is, was just meant to be kind of a, you know, a, a, a very, you know, quick and dirty paste up job of other characters in the hopes of getting some attention. You know, there's nowhere you can go with that. There's nowhere, there's, there's nothing you can, you know, there, there's no, there's, <laughs> there's just nothing you could do with a character that is written that way. And, and so, you know, that, that's where, 
you know, writers can do a lot. It, it depends on how much the writer is able to insert themselves into the character. I think in the case of Riri Williams, you know, Bendis put a lot of him into, into the character itself and, and kind of in many ways tried to, I mean, it was unclear what he was trying to do. He said at, at a later time that he was just trying to, you know, put a character in place so his daughter could see herself in a comic. And I think that's admirable. So lots of people made fun of that, but, you know, I've got daughters and yeah, I'd love to have them, you know, have a character they can identify with in a comic. Now, in fairness, my daughters would never identify with a character based on their skin color. My daughters would identify on the color, you know, character based on what they were interested in. You know, my older daughter, you could have that character be any color, a robot, an alien, anything else. If the character loves animals and, you know, wants to kind of explore the world and, and, you know, find new species of animals, my daughter's going to identify with that character because that's how my daughter looks at, you know, at, at the world and characters and things she wants to engage with. Uh, but Binda said, you know, he was doing it for his daughter. But the problem is, if you if you take that to be true, and then you, you look at, the you know, Riri and how Riri was written, um, the character was, I mean, you would not want your daughter growing up to to behave that way. I mean, it was the character was, was a borderline, you know, psychopath in how the character was written because it was written, she was written so over the top. So, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was a parody of kind of, I'm going to do it on my own independent, you know, black girl trying to figure out what was going on in the world. It was, it, it, it didn't ring true. None of it rang true. And so the character themselves just, you know, suffered significantly for, by being just, uh, you know, I, I would say awkward. I don't, I don't know. Just, just the, the character didn't fit um, what the, what, what the comic was trying to do with it. So I, you know, that, that's definitely, that's definitely a factor in general, though. I stand by the general idea that it's, it's rarely the character. It's almost always the writer that, you know, puts the, puts the words into this character's mouth. So when we're complaining about, you know, this character sucks, that character sucks. Um, it's, you know, you, the, the true criticism is with the person who's putting the character into that position. If we're upset that, uh, you know, Miles Morales is being positioned to kind of take Spider-Man's identity and all the rest. Well, you know, the, the person to, the people to, to criticize there is the, the writer, the editor who's, who's doing that. Miles at, at various times, by the way, including under Bendis, has been an interesting, absorbing, great character. I don't know about great, but, but, but certainly good character. If I go to the movies, I mean, Into the Spider-Verse, that first film, my kids love that film. It, it, a lot of people like that film. It, it did really well. Miles, you know, came across as a likable, unique, you know, his own character, still called Spider-Man, but, you know, they did it in such a way that it made sense. And, you know, it, it worked. Uh, it, it certainly can work, but you have to, you have to be able to write a story that's true to the character. You have to write some, you know, something where the character does have their own identity. And when I say their own identity, I don't mean, you know, whether they're called Spider-Man or not. I mean, their own personality. The, the problem with Riri under Bendis is that she had some very strange kind of amalgamation of personality traits that I think, you know, Bendis himself wanted to try and cram into one character as fast as he could. And the result was, you know, I, it, it, Riri came across as kind of schizophrenic and psychotic. And it, it's, it's not a wonder that she was because the character was written schizophrenic and psychotic. The character was written just, just bizarre. And, and almost every writer that's come after, uh, with the exception of one, uh, did a great job of kind of reclaiming, reclaiming her. So... Is it possible? Yes, you could certainly have a character with just no base traits at all to the point that they're, you know, they're, they're really meant to be an NPC. And I don't mean that in the Twitter meme way. I mean it like, you know, in the video game way. They're really not meant to be much more than that. Um, you could certainly write the character that way. Um, and if you do, it, it becomes very hard for anybody to do anything with it. So, you know. Now, would I like to see Alan Moore, you know, write uh, Adam X? I think I would like to see that. <laughs> I'm interested. Let's uh, let's see what that looks like. Alan Moore's Adam X. Um, 
Sure. Sure. Why not? I, <laughs> that's a strangest thing that uh, I'm going to think about today. Um, anyway, and maybe that'd be a good like contest for some of these uh, writers. Like, you know, Grant Morrison writes, I, you know, death, uh, bah, who, who am I thinking of? Blood rain. You know, I, who knows? Anyway, let's, let's see what some of that looks like. Could be fun. Anyway, thank you very much for the question. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening. <laughs>